I will be discussing the difference in communication between domesticated animals and wild animals. I will use dogs to represent the domesticated animals, and for the wild animals, I'm going to be talking about our closest relatives, the great apes, such as chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas. In order to understand the relevance of this topic, we must first investigate what it means for an animal to be domesticated. The definition of domestication is to breed certain animals, altering their genetics to ultimately benefit humans. Dogs were the first animal to be domesticated. They were thought to have been domesticated sometime between 15,000 to 135,000 years ago. They were initially used for hunting, and today they are used for all sorts of purposes, from companion animals to sports. Technically, it is possible to domesticate any animal, but some species are easier to domesticate than others. Some things that make great apes difficult to domesticate are their large diets, their slow maturation, and their natural lifestyle, which is not conducive to civilized living. Great apes are, however, kept in zoos as pets and used in laboratories. What many people don't understand is that even if a great ape is raised from an infant, it does not mean that the animal is domesticated. They are still wild animals and are prone to unexpectedly revert back to primal instincts. There are many cases of pet monkeys attacking their owners, and yet there are still 23 states that allow great apes to be owned as pets. The bizarre relationship between Travis the chimp and the woman the chimp lived with demands closer examination. She says he brushed her hair, they bathed and slept together, they even drank wine together. But was it precisely that unnatural situation that set the stage for disaster? Since dogs are domestic animals, they depend on humans for their survival. Because of this, they have adapted to understand our communications. There are three kinds of communications, verbal, nonverbal, and written. Verbal communication is any kinds of sounds that are produced by vocal cords, including spoken language and screaming or crying. Nonverbal language includes body and facial language, and then written language are words or symbols written down. Both dogs and great apes are capable of learning to understand these forms of communication. But for dogs, the understanding of many of these cues comes naturally. For example, a dog understands that when a person points their finger to look in the direction that the person is pointing, while great apes will investigate the finger and wonder what the person is doing. A dog can also understand certain facial expressions. This understanding is mostly limited to determining if a person is happy, angry, or surprised. Dogs have facial expressions of their own as well, but they are able to differentiate between a person smiling with their teeth and a dog baring his teeth in an aggressive manner. If a person smiles at a dog, the dog will normally wag its tail. It is harder for a great ape to see the difference. For example, if a chimp bares her teeth, it usually means that an alpha male is approaching her and it's a sign of submission. They are not able to naturally differentiate this between a human smile. Although non-domestic animals lack the ability to naturally understand certain human communication skills, they are able to be taught to interact with humans. Obviously, both dogs and great apes can be taught commands. The vocabulary capacity for a dog is surprisingly large. How much a dog is capable of learning depends heavily on the breed. The first success in communicating with a primate was through teaching a chimp named Washu American Sign Language. Washu learned over 140 signs and was able to create sentences and make up new words. She even taught signs to her adopted son, Lulis. Sign language has been used with many great apes since Washu, including possibly the most famous case, a gorilla named Coco. Another method that researchers have used to teach great apes is the use of symbols. In conclusion, great apes are capable of eventually communicating with us more deeply than dogs ever will, but they require intense teaching. While dogs are not able to understand us to such a depth, they are able to understand surface communication naturally without being taught.